What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the CS Joseph Podcast. This is Season 18, Cogna Mechanics. And filming in uh, my illustrious spot. Already, uh, the local populace has uh, decided that uh, I am a public nuisance, I imagine. And uh, mostly because they can't handle the fact that some tough dude who kind of looks and acts like Andrew Tate because he's an ENTP UDSF is walking around or, you know, filming on literally a street corner in front of a bunch of people, and it's really making everyone uncomfortable. And you know what? I absolutely love that. My SE demon is just full of joy over that as I absorb that uh, uncomfort muchly. So, and while most people assume I'm just making a fool of myself, I could care less. I'm enjoying a cigar, a much-deserved cigar, especially after everything that I had to deal with today. And what I had to deal with today, very painful. Season 18, Common Mechanics, we've been discussing Octogram. Specifically, the four variants of the Octogram. And today's variant that we're going to be discussing is the SDSF Octogram. Uh, which is entirely uh, necessary. Let me double check my notes though to actually make sure that that is what I'm supposed to be lecturing on. Oh yeah, it is. It is the SDSF. So yeah. Anyway, we know that the octogram discerns four variants for each type. These four variants are different shades and flavors of each type. There are layers that determine octogram influence beneath what is easily visible. Octogram deals with development and focus. Cognitive development and cognitive focus exist on a temple level, four size level, and an individual function level. A person's octogram reveals their preference for which temple, which side of the mind, and yes, even which functions they prefer, which is entirely necessary. We actually talk about this at length in the Ego Hacking Your Fear Masterclass. If you don't have the Ego Hacking Your Fear Masterclass, I highly recommend you get it, and that is at egohackingyourfear.com. But you have to already own the course, or at least purchase the course at that page to get to the Masterclass page to be able to get the Masterclass as well. But if you already own the course and do not have the Masterclass, just go to offers.csjoseph.life forward slash E-Y-F hyphen Masterclass, and you'll be able to find it there where we actually talk about the contents of this lecture in a completely different light and perspective. So, the octogram. Remember, the octogram is all about cognitive development versus cognitive focus, right? Cognitive development and focus. So cognitive development is, uh, it, while the octogram is all about human nurture and measuring someone's human nurture, the nurture itself, it's still very fluid, it's still very uh, flexible, ultimately. But cognitive development more so is kind of on the static side. And development absolutely matters. Development is everything. Because development comes from a person's childhood. At least that's where it should come from. And often doesn't change except for severe trauma. Uh, and maybe actually uh, catharsis. We had a little bit of research in the field reveal that there's actually a chance that Catharsis, given that catharsis usually is seen as a positive thing, it's actually more of a neutral thing. And uh, catharsis uh, ends up being like a, a way to uh, adjust someone's cognitive development because even catharsis can be a very negative experience. I had no idea. But basically, it's all about really pre established neural pathways. That is what cognitive development is all about. Whereas cognitive focus is where you are taking your brain next to the next level, uh, potentially beyond uh, what most people are aware of or willing to accept. So yeah, uh, because it's like the direction they're taking themselves in their life. Cognitive development represents the introverted sensing or the experience of an individual. Cognitive focus represents the introverted intuition where they are taking their life, what their future is all about. That is cognitive focus. And actually gives the ability to predict certain people at certain times. So be aware of that. Be aware of that possibility. Because it is uh, quite fascinating. So today's variant that we're discussing is subconscious developed subconscious focus. 
Subconscious development, subconscious focus is a hyper development, even hyper fixation in the subconscious. Remember, it is one of the atypical octogram variants. It is atypical. Uh, it's not so common. Common ones are um, SDUF uh, and then uh, UDSF, as we've noted. So those are pretty common because, you know, it takes a lot of enablement in a person's life to get them to SDSF in as much as it takes a lot of disablement in a person's life to get them to UDUF, which is something entirely different. Very different. People end up having everything handed to them and end up having that expectation versus people who have everything taken away from them over and over and over again, the, the, the UDUF way. So anyway, a hyperfixation on the subconscious. For example, SDSF ENTPs are hyper fixated on their duty, comfort, and strength. SDSF INFJs are hyper developed on their performance and commanding attention from others. SDSF types were enabled in their childhood environment. What does enablement mean? It could mean either their environment was very accommodating to their ego and their subconscious was able to flourish naturally, like Taylor Swift with ESFP to INTJ subconscious. Or their environment was set up so that a person's subconscious was better for their environment than their ego was. Like an INTP son and daughter with an SDSF INTJ father, accessing that ESFJ subconscious would be better for the relationship. That being said, being SDSF doesn't mean easy, and it just means that a person is allowed to remain in their ego and subconscious. These types tend to have more psychological energy as a result. And it's true, it's like being enabled in your youth being enabled in your childhood. The thing is, is that what I've noticed about SDSF types is that they have this tendency to enforce enablement. They enforce or force other people in their lives to enable them. These are the people who are all about the good vibes. They got to have the good vibes all the time and be part of the good vibe at all times. But do they? Do they actually do that? Well, no, no they don't, but they think they do. It's because the thing is, it's like, hey man, you're cramping my style. You know, that literally said by an SDSF person, right? Hey man, don't, don't hurt my vibe right now, the SDSF kind of way. You know, it kind of has like INFP, Big Lebowski uh, 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 vibes, you know, Jeff Bridges, etc. Got to pull the wrapper off of this so I can actually like handle this properly. Nope, that didn't work. Let me uh, try to pull this. There we go. Nope. That didn't work. That didn't work either. I wonder if I'll get through this lecture without being stopped or bothered. We'll see. We'll see. Much better. So, anyway. SDSF types, like, they, they have this thing where, you know... They will cut people out of their life who don't enable them, who don't give them the opportunity to reach further enablement in their lives. It's one of the most frustrating things about SDSF, but at the same time, I kind of got to give them props because while I've had many SDSF people kind of like, you know, deject me throughout my life and treat me with absolute total dejection, I have found it to be very amazing, very, uh, very excellent, actually, uh, because I've been able to learn from them the ability to, you know, create those positive vibes and actually know when to enable versus when to disable. Something that I've needed to learn in order to develop my own subconscious focus, being a UDSF variant of ENTP. Something that I'm very proud to say that I was able to accomplish even though I was UDUF for so long. And trust me folks, being UDUF sucks. It absolutely sucks. But I'm out of it and I am free of that. The thing is, is that maintaining subconscious focus is difficult. And what I'm talking about right now, when compared to the uh, SDSF way, is that they are maintaining their subconscious focus. They are maintaining the good vibes by enforcing those good vibes, enforcing uh, protection over their own inferior function, ultimately their gateway into their subconscious. And I realize that just as of recent, I've been doing the same thing in order to maintain uh, my subconscious focus for being UDSF. 
And don't forget, subconscious focus is ultimately more of a long-term investment for the brain. A child starts out trying to be a subconscious focus, trying to aspire. That's what they do. That's what they do. But oftentimes they end up, uh, you know, oftentimes they end up not doing so and they end up going to survival mode, which is unconscious focus. But from a subconscious focus perspective, being able to, you know, having it be necessary to protect your gateway and just basically enforce uh, your inferior functions, uh, needs, wants, uh, etc., is entirely necessary for the subconscious focus person. And sometimes people don't develop the skills to do that in childhood, except SDSF people do, because the children of the world are trying to be subconscious focused by default. In fact, the brain is always trying to get back to that point over and over and over. So yeah, it's very necessary, very awesome, very fun. So let's talk about the temples, temple preference for SDSF types. SDSF types utilize the motivations of the temple that govern their subconscious. SDSF body temple types rely on the freedom and passion of their heart temple subconscious to assist in achieving legacy. Or SDSF mind temple types rely on the principles and identity derived from their soul temple subconscious to be better educators and high achievers. SDSF heart temple uh, types rely on achievement and exploration derived from their body temple subconscious to experience passion, which is 100% true. Um, recently, uh, Fib, God bless him, uh, became my roommate, and this is exactly how he conducts himself on a regular basis. He is subconscious developed, subconscious focused, and he is constantly uh, all about his, uh, his achievement and exploration. He, uh, he even challenged me recently with the types of books that I have been recommending to him and taking those books to a point where uh, those books are helping him explore more, helping him achieve more. And uh, he, is, he works very diligently and he is absolutely a high achiever. Uh, and the thing is also, I've noticed that uh, with another INTJ SDSF um, woman who's in my life, and uh, she also acts the same way. She's all about, she's all about, um, she's all about achievement and exploration, and taking away exploration or the opportunity to achievement, just, it just kind of kills their soul a little bit, and all of a sudden those good vibes are gone. You know, it just, it just kind of sucks. And then soul temple types that are SDSF. Soul temple types rely on knowledge and skill to understand themselves and better their character in their mind temple subconscious. And uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. They, like, soul temple types that do that, oh my God, their performance is through the roof. And you just end up absolutely enjoying whatever performance they actually put on. Uh, I'm, I'm just, it's just, it's just incredible. I love being in their presence. I really enjoy it very much so. Really, really enjoy it. So yeah, but guess what? SDSF types have cognitive functions that they prefer as well, uh, which is uh, SDSF types are hyper-developed in their child plus their inferior. Their innocence was enabled and their child was able to rapidly glow. Likewise, their inferior was taken care of and also able to rapidly grow as a result. These people are walking aspiration machines and they're constantly aspiring on a regular basis, right? It's so nice to have them around. I, I'm, I'm so thankful for the ones that I do have in my life. I know an ISFJ, an INTJ, and an ENTP, I'm surrounded by SDSF people who are heart temple and all I can do is just literally be thankful for these people in my life. I love them so much. I love them so dearly. I love how they have that joy energy that we've been talking about from a Strauss and Howe theory perspective, the book from uh, The Fourth Turning, etc. I, I love that. I'm, I'm so thankful for that uh, because the joy that they bring to the table, it really helped me get out of the despair that I was in with my UDUF self, my past UDUF self. But yeah, that's kind of where that's at. So in their subconscious, SDSF types are the most developed of all the variants, 
with their child and their inferior function. Their inferior function has more heroic energy and their child has more parental energy than any of the variants. And that makes sense because they're able to cognitive transition easily into the subconscious and use their subconscious on a regular basis. Talking about Viv with his ISFJ subconscious, just yesterday he was giving me advice on how to, con uh, to uh, communicate better with members of the team because I didn't even realize that, you know, let's be honest, C.S. Joseph can be quite much for uh, people, especially members of the team because I have a tendency to be this great ocean deluge that just dumps everything on people and expects them to just know what I'm talking about. Whereas there's some people that need to be properly spoon fed. And uh, I have a really hard time doing that. But he uses ISFJ subconscious to extroverted feeling parent my ass with his uh, child function, which honestly uh, is a great sight and a great experience every time because I learn so much. Remember, you learn the most from people who share your type. That's a fact. And I did learn the most uh, and I often learn the most from him. And, it, and it's so incredible. It's, a, it's an incredible experience every time. I'm very happy about that. SESF types have huge preference for their subconscious in many, if not most, areas of their life. And uh, they really, really do. I, it's so nice too, because like even you know the ISFJ in my life, who's SDSF, that's Robert Potts, constantly looking out for consequences that my expert intuition hero just doesn't see because it rests on its laurels because it's a hero function. And then he's like, well, hold on, man. If you do that, this bad thing's going to happen. And he's even providing me warnings. I'm like, oh, thank God, you know? Because, you know, like for example, like when it comes to the team and I hire people, I don't hire people to tell them what to do. I hire people to, for them to tell me what to do, ultimately. That's what I do, because that's like the best way to actually guarantee success, in my opinion. The, uh, the Steve Jobs way, basically. I learned to, uh, to listen. Listening, uh, listening is absolutely necessary, listening to SDSF. And so, anyway, folks, like if you have SDSF people in your life, yeah, I know they can be annoying when it comes to them expecting the good vibes and whatnot, and they'll cognitive transition and use their parent function to enforce that uh, expectation. But really, folks, it is for your benefit. Yes, they've been enabled. Yes, they expect you to enable them. That's okay. Because guess what? You know, the result is, is that at the end of the day, you become a better person. At least that's my experience. And I believe a lot of you folks will have similar experiences to that end. I really do, so. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening. I know that these season 18s are a little bit shorter than usual, but we're just covering the specific variants, and uh, we've talked them to death in so much other formats. So it's just important to get the base technical knowledge out about how the variants work within the context of cognitive mechanics for season 18 because it's the most technical season of them all. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.